Hi, Dr. Perkins, Johnston, and everyone. My name is Lily Hung. My topic is to analyze the epidemiology of nasopharyngeal carcinoma (NPC). I used a true story, the testimonial of my ex-husband Lawrence Young, survivor of terminal nasopharyngeal carcinoma, to illustrate the epidemiology of this type of cancer. According to the lecture, epidemiology is the investigation of the distribution and frequencies of a particular disease that have the commonalities in human populations, such as in different nations, countries, or provinces. My analysis includes. The topic of environmental and lifestyle factors, carcinogens, heredity, radiation treatments, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. NPC is a very common malignancy disease in southern China, especially in Guangdong province, but it is rare. In other parts of the world, unfortunately, my ex-husband Lawrence Young was diagnosed with terminal NPC at stage four point five, as advised by his doctor during a business trip to Hong Kong. First, I would like to discuss. Environmental and lifestyle factors. Lawrence was born in Guangdong Province. At the age of seven, he immigrated to Hong Kong. Most of the Chinese in Hong Kong were eating the Guangdong diet. Lawrence's Guangdong Province diet includes salty fish, salty eggs, processed fermented eggs. Smelly fermented tofu, and non-organic chickens with hormones and antibiotics. These contained a lot of carcinogens, and contributed to his NPC. Additionally, he was a second-hand smoker. In his early twenties, he worked as a band leader for two nightclubs. Later, he owned a medium-sized garment company. Therefore, he had to entertain his business associates in second-hand smoking areas. This built up carcinogens in his body. Lawrence was also exposed to DDT, a chemical carcinogen that could cause cancer. In 1974, when we moved into an apartment, he sprayed a huge-sized bottle of DDT in order to kill the cockroaches in the kitchen cabinet, and he did not wear a mask. After that, he was sick for six months with a fever and almost died. On the Physiology aspects. He was under tremendous stress because we immigrated to the U U.S. in 1991. Then, he took a job and needed to travel back and forth to Hong Kong a lot. He was very tired from a jack, a lack of sleep, and continued jet lag due to the 15-hour. Time differences between the U.S. and Hong Kong. Carcinogens are very important factors that often lead to cancer. Salty fish, salty eggs, processed fermented eggs, smelly tofu, fermented tofu, smelled like poop, 
but taste very good. Non-organic chicken, tobacco smoke, even worse when it is secondhand. Stress, DDT chemical exposure, and lack of sleep along with continual jet lag, weakened the immune system. Are all factors that can lead to cancer. Lawrence received a maximum dosage of radiation treatments in Hong Kong at the Hong Kong Baptist Hospital. Due to the severe damages from radiation treatments, he also incorporated Chinese herbal medicines to help with his recovery. The side effects from the radiation treatments include his right eye going blind. He signed a contract that he would lose his right eye sight before starting the treatments, and he lost fifty percent of the hearing of his right ear. He also experienced serious. Vertigo, and he finally had a stroke just eighteen months ago. I speculate that Lawrence's stroke was brought on by his stress. According to a peer-reviewed journal, which is also an empirical, longitudinal, and quantitative study, with a major aim on examining. Longitudinal age-related changes in cardiovascular reactivity during stress. It includes sixty-seven credible citation sources that reported that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the U.S. for both males and females. I also speculate. That Lawrence's stroke was related to some cancer cells that died inside his arteries or veins. He seems to to be having a recurrence of MPC again. Again, according to the lecture, stress can cause cancer, and cancer cells can die inside the arteries. And veins, and block the blood flow. And this can cause a stroke or heart attack too. Besides, I also learned from the lecture that advancing age is a very important factor for people to get cancer, and older people have a higher rate of getting cancer. In addition, heredity is one of the factors that causes cancer. The genetic factor includes both Lawrence's mom and his sister, who both died of lung cancer at the age of forty-four. In nineteen ninety-six, Lawrence received. Forty-four treatments of hyperbaric oxygen therapy at Virginia Mason Hospital and Medical Center, Seattle, Washington, to help him to heal the serious infections and inflammation that no other treatments could help. Lawrence sat inside a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And received one hundred percent oxygen for forty-five minutes on each treatment. It saved his life. It has been. He has been a cancer survivor since March nineteen ninety-five, a total of seventeen years already. After he finished taking a maximum dosage of radiation treatments. Lastly, this chart is from the Hong Kong Center for Health Protection. It shows the number of new cases and cruelty incidents rate of MPC by sex 
from the year 1983 to 2000, males are having higher numbers than females. Furthermore, the statistic study from NCI also claims that the male cancer incidence rates are much higher than those for the female. This is my reference page. Special thanks to Dr. Perkins Johnston to provide us with so much valuable information and materials. I'm so glad that I take this course. This course really educates me with all the important knowledge and also fully equipped me to detect signs of this terrifying disease cancer. It will be very helpful for my future practice to educate my patients, friends, and family. Hopefully, I can serve people better. Last but not least, thanks so very much for all of your participation on the discussions. Although I could not communicate with you all, I really learned a lot from you all. Your valuable insights helped to open my eyes more widely. Good luck to every one of you on your final. Keep up the good work. Thank you.